God gave me a vision and he said, we can do it in 21 days. I'm asking 2,100 people to give $2,100 in the next 21 days. And what we're calling it is out of the harbor. Something just doesn't smell right. Initially, I didn't know what to make of this. But then the more I thought about it, the more I heard it. There's something that's just not right about this. Now, if you haven't heard Keon Henderson, who I do not think is an appropriate person for anyone to be listening to. I don't think that he's qualified. Uh, he had, and unfortunately, their church was hit by a hurricane just recently in Houston. A, a, a massive power outage throughout the entire city, over two and a half million. I think people were without power. It took them a long time to get back uh, to power. And his church was hit hard. As a matter of fact, their sanctuary, I don't know if they, I think they have two campuses. I'm not sure how many campuses they have, but at least this one, that particular one, the main campus, that was hit hard. And so you could not go into it. Now, here is the problem. Here is the issue that I have. I wanted to spend a moment to give you the state of our church and to let you know where we are after the unfortunate events of Hurricane Barrel. You see, my wife and I were on our sabbatical month we were on vacation, spending time with each other. It was just my birthday two days prior. All I could think about is the time I would have with my bride and the time we would be able to use to reconnect through the busy vicissitudes of life. Only to Now, that part, and this is just me thinking, he is he's the kind of person who is all about branding himself. He is busy. He stays busy. Part of the problem with with his schedule, and I have this problem with a lot of a lot of these modern pastors who they're more about branding themselves and brand putting out the brand than being a shepherd. A shepherd, an effective shepherd, has to be close by, has to have close proximity to the flock. Otherwise, what sort of shepherd are you? And so, because it also highlights your concern, is your concern more about you or the sheep? And so oftentimes he's away promoting his book, promoting his wife's book, promoting all these other things. And what I mean by that, as a matter of fact, here is just a quick little snippet of him out uh, gallivanting, doing whatever. And every time when you go to his Instagram page, you see a lot of branding. It's, it's almost like a, a commercial put together. Book coming out August the 6th called Lazy Love. Lazy love. On by the river. My God. In a little tent. Be taking care of stuff. Every sense. My God makes my enemies my footstool. So whether it's highlighting his book, his wife's book, or things that's happening with him, as though he is, he's got an entourage, people coming to open a door and so forth, highlighting his birthday. Yeah, maybe that's the problem why you feel like you are uh, been too busy. But I'll come back to that in a little bit. Let's go back to what he's stating about his church. To get a call that there was a storm that hit and things might not be okay. Now you have to understand, I didn't believe it because you cannot imagine how many storms we've survived. We've gone through Harvey, Ike, none of the storms ever seemed to touch us. But did God have something else in mind? You can't imagine all that took place for us to get in the building. And now I am looking at 15 years gone in 15 minutes. Now, this is un not uncommon. Other churches have had issues too. As a matter of fact, other churches throughout the country, whether it's there through the hurricane or other issues, have had these similar problems. And I'm going to highlight one in particular. As a matter of fact, a church that's bigger than this particular church that had something to happen to them and you're going to see a stark difference between the two. Yes, I had moments of depression. Yes, I live by faith and I walk by faith, but I had moments where I felt like giving up. The Why? It's all, listen, literally, it's only been, it's been less than a month. Why would you feel like giving up? Why the depression? Really? If those are the sort of things that will rock your faith, test your faith, then you really have no business being called Lighthouse Church or whatever it's called, Lighthouse, whatever it's called. Uh, there's no reason for that because you're not a lighthouse. If, if you're the kind of person that at the sight of this, that tests your faith, giving up and depression, well, we might need another shepherd. The impact was so great, not just on the building, but all of the decisions I knew I would have to make. Where is the daycare going to go? 
Where is the school going to go? We've got 300 kids in daycare and school that are now displaced. And where do you put the 60 to 80 staff members? Now, I know what some of the skeptics have said. They've said, ah, oh, don't worry about Keon and Shawnee. They're going to be fine. You know, insurance will take care of it. Let me tell you something. Anybody who tells you that doesn't know how the world works. Okay, a couple things. One, and obviously I've never had this happen personally with a church. Now, I've been involved in churches and we've had logistical issues. So there's always something happening, even when the when an insurance company has to come in. Now, a couple of things. One, this isn't uncommon. Churches have issues where there might be a flood in the sanctuary, a fire, things like that, and the insurance does kick in. As a matter of fact, another more another popular church here in Texas recently had an issue. It wasn't with a it wasn't with a flood. It wasn't with a uh, with a hurricane, but it was with a fire. Breaking news: Flames destroyed part of the First Baptist Dallas historic sanctuary in downtown. Good evening, I'm Clarice Tinsley. That four alarm fire caused the building's roof to partially collapse. Tonight, church leaders tell us they are glad no one was hurt. Now, what they did not do was that they did not come back and ask anyone for any help because their insurance kicked in. There's a difference between what their insurance is trying to do versus what Keon is trying to do, at least I speculate. Now, obviously, there's, there's logistical issues happening. And just like his church, there's a lot going on at First Baptist Church here in Dallas. I mean, a lot going on. And where it's located, it's it's literally downtown Dallas. And so the logistics of even putting the thing back together and fixing things and so forth, it is difficult. But uh, I understand what insurance is going to do. And I understand what insurance in this event is not going to do. I'm going to bring it up in a second as well. The insurance job is to give you a depreciated value on the assets that you have. And we are in the process now of fighting to get all we can for the people of our community, of our church. The process is a hurry up and wait process. And we're in the beginning of it. Rebuilding is a daunting task. However, if there is but one defining trait that unites us, it is that our church and its leadership, we are resilient. I need you to help us in rebuilding. You know, we were getting ready to do this in October anyway, and those of you all who've watched me, you've heard me say that it was time for us to expand our sanctuary. That's the issue right there. Now, I understand you want to have the insurance company to come back and fill. Typically, in most cases, now, I don't know what sort of insurance you have, which also may speak to um, the leadership and not knowing what sort of insurance you have. But in most cases, the insurance is going to make you whole, but they're not going to make you better off than you were before. That's not the insurance company's job. And so if you have always had in mind to grow your sanctuary, to build it, he's going to talk about a little bit about doubling it. Well, then the insurance company is not going to make adjustments so that you can help to meet your goal. No, they're going to replace what was what was damaged. Are there things that happen with the insurance companies battling back and forth? Sure. But what I think what it seems like you're trying to do is the wrong. It's almost though you're, you're going to use this to step up. And he's going to say something about this in a second. But before we do. Remember, and this is what I, this is what I've always felt about someone like a Keon Henderson. So something about Keon and his wife is something that is abundantly clear, at least even from someone looking back from outside looking in, and even from someone on the inside looking in, and uncover something that he doesn't speak about. That is this: uh, when he brings up this point, Paul brings this point in First Timothy six. He says, "But God, these are people who are um, depraved mind and deprived of the truth." Who, su who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. There are those who will use the church, their position to kind of gain in their status, in their stature. And I think that's what's happening. I don't think that's what seems to be happening here because we can just look at the evidence. These are the kind of people that will use you, that will exploit you. I'm going to come back to that in a second because he's going to make that clear also. We were turning six to 700 people away every week. The parking was abysmal, but we made it. I told our church that we were going to start over. And yet again, I believe God said, Keon, your faith was too small. So let me blow the building down so you can build what I put in your heart. So I want to. So it's the Lord who blew it down just so you can build over, but not build over, but I guess build back better. Blow it out. Blow it up. No, you're thinking too small, Keon. I want you to have something bigger than what you had before. Again, it's this mentality about getting more for yourself. Priest the size of our sanctuary by two. I want to increase the size of our sanctuary 
by two. I want to double the size of it so that no one who has an opportunity to get in is turned away because we don't have a seat. We can't. So how that works is if you want to double it and let's say you got more growth than you got space. Well, what do you do? You have more services. You have more services and you increase the duties of others and you put that into the budget. You account for that in the budget. You don't wait for a disaster and then hope the insurance company can also help. And then and then also ask for outsiders help, which is what he's getting ready to do. And to me, this is more of a scheme, more of a ploy. It doesn't sound right. I don't you don't really hear churches doing this in the midst of a disaster or something happening like this. Let's use this as an opportunity to get more money to come in. Can't wait on the insurance company to do that. I need you from around the world. If I've ever preached a message that has touched your spirit, if I've ever spoken into your life and you started the company that you were not going to start had I not pushed you in faith. If you were thinking about ending your own life, but somehow God gave me a word that made you fight to live another day. I need you. God. That bothers me. That's the problem that part that bothers me. That's your job. You're supposed to do that. So if I've ever said it, gave, given a message, if I've ever done anything that has ever blessed you or helped you internally, then I need you. In other words, I'm calling in my chips. If I ever done anything for you, now you owe me. I've done for you. Uh, you've been blessed by me. What have you now bless me back. That is not how that works. That that's the part that is is I don't want to say despicable, but it's problematic. That is not what a pastor should ever do. Listen, if if I've ever done anything for you, I want you to give me. No, not not that way. Now, what you should have done is if you're going to ask for some help, what about the people that have also that go to your church that have been displaced? What about the people who um, you mentioned about a person who whose uh, tree went through their house or on their car? What about what about those people? What about you having people come together, asking for some money, donating money to help the community? You'll take care of your church. Let the members of that church take care of that church. And then anyone who wants to give money will also use that to help the community. But no, we've got to build back and build it better. Two times the size of the sanctuary than we had before. God gave me a vision and he said we can do it in 21 days. I'm asking 2,100 people to give $2,100 in the next 21 days. And what we're calling it is out of the harbor. So what is that, 4.4 .4 million, four, four plus million? The, the, the problem with that is this, number one, what he's doing is he's using people. The Bible says that in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago, though, is not idle. He is using you to, to, to pull on your heartstring or to say, hey, if I've ever done anything for you, give, help me out. No. Now, we've got an example of what a church looks like when they are trying to kind of take care of the body. This isn't taking care of the body. This is taking care of the building. And so in Acts 4, we say we see what happens. Those when a congregation is filled with the spirit and their focus on each other. This is a congregation they, they who believe they were all of one heart and soul and not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was his own. Now, I understand it's different. It's different and maybe even more difficult to do that today but their focus was each other. And so let's say it takes a while to get the building back up to snuff. Fine, rent out a an auditorium, some school. It's possible there because other people do it. We've got churches all over the country that do that now. So do that. Let the insurance take care of what the insurance is supposed to take care of. Uh, even if you've got to use uh, some other funds as a stopgap, if you don't have funds in the bank already, that speaks to your uh, management skills. Or how about this? How about you dig in your own pockets and you do this? How about you go into your pockets? This is a problem that just it, it, it's just bothersome. How awesome of a story would have been that, hey, the church had a need. And then rather than going to the people, the pastor and his wife uh, went into their pockets and covered what the church needed. And then guess what? Use it as a stopgap. And then the insurance money that came in that went back into the into the church that end up uh, replacing whatever monies were taken from somewhere else. You could do that. It's happened many times before throughout the country with churches because insurance can be slow sometimes, but it's not that slow. And again, we saw what Dallas, what First Baptist did in Dallas. They were all, they already re, or they're rebuilding. And so there's not, there should not have been a stop in the program, maybe this in the location, but don't use this as an opportunity, even where other people who are also displaced, other people's homes were affected 
but rather than getting back what you lost, you want to get back more than what you had. You want to know I started off here, but let's use this as an opportunity to go go here. Don't do that. Don't take advantage of the situation. Don't take advantage of the people. Don't do that. This is another reason and yet a string of reasons why this person just should not be pastoring. 